Dobermans can be, well, pretty scary dogs. I mean, they're certainly scary to a burglar. Uh, uh, good, good doggy, good doggy. So, wrong, wrong house. Good doggy. <laughs> Believe it or not, though, Dobermans can actually be pretty scary even to their own owners, albeit in a much different way. Why? Because as much as I'm a fan of the Doberman breed, even I have to admit that there are some real downsides to owning a Doberman that can be quite terrifying in the right circumstances. And that's what this episode is all about. Up first, this breed can be really prone to separation anxiety because these are really owner-focused dogs that have been called Velcro dogs more than once. In fact, they're called that all the time because they stick to your side leg Velcro and sometimes it feels like you just gotta peel them off to get, them, <laughs> to get a little space from you. But it, that can be a great thing. But the downside is because they're so attached to their owners, they are prone to that separation anxiety. And sometimes something as simple as grabbing your car keys to leave for work for the day, just grabbing your keys can set your dog off and he'll be pacing and whining and crying uh, and walking back and forth. And then if it continues to get worse after you leave, you could have some other symptoms of separation anxiety, like howling and barking and crying, even chewing and destructive behavior. They could even get in and destroy your YouTube set if you're not careful. Yep, that's right. Uh, Arlo, when he was younger, um, during a phase when I was getting him used to uh, being away from me for longer, longer stretches of time as he was kind of reaching that age, he was still contained in a pen for safety, but he found a way out of that safety pen. Not only that, but he found a way into my office by opening the door where I record a lot of my YouTube videos. You guys probably recognize the area. Um, and he got in and shut the door behind him. Now he was stuck in this room and his anxiety just went through the roof because he realized he was stuck and the results uh, weren't very pretty. And there's all my trash camera gear, tripods, lighting. Oh, here's a good $300 camera right here. That's nice. Thank you, Arlo. That brings me to my next point. Dobermans have pretty high demands for attention as far as dogs go. And they're certainly just not a set it and forget it type of dog by any means. In fact, they can get pretty demanding about having that attention from their owners. Uh, they might put their head in your lap with a significant amount of force. That sounds like it's a nice gesture and it, it is, but they put a significant amount of force that makes it really clear that, hey, you're not pushing their head off and they're gonna just sit here until they get some attention or they might get right in your face because you haven't been getting attention or climbing up on you and trying to get in your lap because you haven't been paying enough attention to them. They thrive on those one-on-one -on -one training times and exercise with them and all that personal interaction with you. Um, it's just a lot of demand for the attention. And you know they're just really not happy unless they get that. And that is great, but it's also really hard if you have an exceptionally busy life. Now, speaking of exercise, another potential downside is these Dobermans do have pretty high exercise requirements and seemingly endless amounts of energy. You know, as a working dog, they always kind of just need a task to complete or something to apply all their energy to. And it's really a strange balance with the Dobermans because they are a high energy dog in my mind, but they're not the same as many other breeds that are high energy where those breeds a lot of times are bouncing off the walls with seemingly no purpose because they have no idea what to do with all this energy. Dobermans aren't like that. They can be fairly stoic at times, but still have that need to have that release of the energy. So even if sometimes you don't see it, it's still there and they can still be unhappy and they can require at a minimum one to two hours of exercise every single day. Now, sometimes you'll get a Doberman that has even more energy than that. And I've talked to some owners that say that they take their Dobermans on three to four one hour walks per day. That's three to four hours of good exercise every single day. And it, they're still just barely getting the exercise that they need. So it really depends on your individual. But even if the dog is stoic, you gotta make sure that they're getting the energy they need. Cause a well-exercised Doberman is just a really just relaxed, restful and just easy going dog. Whereas one that hasn't gotten the exercise needs met is a lot more just uptight and just in your face and demanding and more on edge and reactive, more likely to bark and chew and destroy things. So you really wanna make sure you get the energy requirements met, but that can absolutely be a downside to this breed. 
Now, another real big and very real downside to this breed is a condition called dilated cardiomyopathy, or DCM. Now, this is a heart condition that's chronic, and it almost always takes the life of the Doberman. And it's something that hardworking breeders are really working hard to try to reduce or eliminate in the Doberman lines. And there are a lot of organizations like the Doberman Diversity Project that's working extremely hard to try to reduce or eliminate this from the gene pool. But right now, it's a reality of the breed. We don't know exactly what causes it. We know it's genetic and we know it's common with Dobermans. In fact, there was a study recently that showed that 58%, over 58% of Dobermans will um, come down with DCM at some point in their life. And it is definitely one of the major downsides to taking on this amazing breed. Now, another major downside to this breed is the breed perception. It's the stigma that's kind of been following this breed around since, well, at least the 1970s, probably before that. A lot of people just believe because of what they've seen on television or movies that the Doberman is an aggressive, dangerous, or just downright mean dog. Now, you and I on this channel know that that is certainly not the case. They're one of the most loving dogs around and most committed to their owners. But not everybody knows that. And that does have some effects on you as the owner of a Doberman. Uh, for example, you might start to notice when you go to a dog park, maybe some owners of some other dogs might leash up their dogs and leave. That's happened to me more than a few times. And it's a shame because you're trying to socialize your dog with more dogs and they just see your dog, they assume a bunch of things and they leash up theirs and leave. Um, or you're out at a park with a bunch of crowded people and you're hoping that someone will come up and ask you about your dog and want to pet them because it helps with socialization, right? Well, you might get fewer of those people willing to do that with a Doberman. Uh, also, if you, your neighbor, for example, maybe he's not too into dogs, but you bring home a Doberman, they're going to be a lot slower to warm up to that dog than if you brought home a Labrador or a Golden Retriever. And that might make it a little easier for them just because of the perception. So it can make certain things tough, you know, and it's just this aura of uncomfortableness sometimes that will follow you around when you're in a crowd. And it's a shame because when you're in a crowd, especially is when you want people to come up and interact with your dog to help with socialization, help keep them a calm, relaxed dog, used to other people petting him and stuff. But sometimes it's hard to get that when you own a Doberman. Another potential downside is a judgment from other people. And certainly a lot of people will judge you just simply for owning a Doberman in the first place. But even more than that, if you get your dog's ears cropped or tail docked, which is the breed standard here in the United States, for a Doberman, you're gonna get potentially a lot of judgment, maybe not as much inside the US where that is incredibly common. In fact, that's a normal way you see a Doberman, um, but you're gonna certainly get that internationally. So if you're posting pictures, for example, on social media, you're gonna get a lot of those comments like, oh, why don't we chop your ears off? Or how nice you love your dog so much you mutilate your dog. You know, you'll get a lot of those comments and it doesn't matter it, that, you know, you got your dog from your breeder with the ears already cropped, which is kind of the normal here in the US a lot of times, or that you rescued a dog with ears already cropped and you had nothing to do with it. Doesn't matter, you're still gonna get those uh, sometimes mean and cruel comments. And, um, you know, it, it, that could definitely be a downside. And sometimes you'll even get those in person here in the US as well, although that is less common. But that's a potential downside for sure for owning this breed. Now, speaking of the negative perception of Dobermans that I mentioned earlier, also because of that, insurance and housing can be a problem with the Doberman breed. Um, a lot of times you have a really hard time finding a landlord who will rent to someone who has a Doberman. Sometimes they'll even say pet friendly, but they'll have exclusions for certain breeds and the Doberman's always gonna be on those lists. A lot of times it'll make finding a roommate harder as well because of that negative perception that they've seen on movies and television about the Doberman or um, insurance companies. So even if you go off and buy your own house, you're not really out of the woods because a lot of homeowners insurance policies, even ones that say that they're dog friendly companies will have an exclusion list of dangerous breeds or aggressive breeds, which of course we know on this channel is not a thing, but um, they will have exclusions like that and you can almost always guarantee that the Doberman Pinscher is gonna be on that list. So it can make even getting homeowner's insurance potentially difficult. This is a real serious downside to owning a Doberman. Up next is their extreme intelligence. Now, don't get me wrong, I more than anybody love owning the Doberman for their intelligence. They're the fifth smartest dog breed in the world and it makes it possible to teach them new commands with as little as five repetitions, uh, to have them perform that command accurately 95% of the time. And by the way, I'm not making up these numbers. These are all from Dr. Stanley Corrin's research in the intelligence of Dobermans, which by the way, I'm gonna link to that in the sources down below. But all that intelligence definitely comes with a downside as well. They can use that intelligence to outsmart you, to manipulate you, even as some owners put it, to own you. Uh, and especially if you're in that stage where a Doberman is under about one year of age and they're really testing the boundaries in the house, they could really put their brain power to some 
bad and not always good. And it, it can blow your mind what they're capable of. They can do things from just sneaky little things that are mildly annoying, like maybe figuring out how to open your closet door and then get the socks out of your hamper to go run and play with, all the way to some more serious things like just having you question your whole training style or your leadership style because of the way they're manipulating the situation or even just questioning life in general. I mean, these guys will blow your mind with how smart and intelligent they are. And that intelligence definitely comes with some downsides. Now, speaking of which, dominance is definitely another potential downside to this breed. This is naturally a fairly dominant breed. Now, of course, every dog's its individual, so some are gonna be naturally more dominant than others. But on a whole, I'd say the Dobermans are on the dominant side. Now, that could be tough, especially before the dog is one year of age when they're testing the boundaries in the house. And if you're not a calm, consistent, strong, and decisive leader, um, then the dog is gonna naturally try to assume the leadership position just because of their instincts. And this can make it really tough. And it, it, those, that stage of the puppy nipping and biting is really kind of drawn out and potentially a little bit more intense with the Doran breed over many other breeds. If you ask a lot of frustrated owners, especially with dogs that are under one year of age, um, if they think this Doberman dominance thing could be a bit of an issue, I think a lot of them would potentially agree with you, especially if they're wrestling with that drawn out puppy nipping and biting stage. Now, overall guys, I truly think the Doberman breed is the most amazing dog breed out there and any potential downsides they have are far outweighed by their upsides. And I just love this breed, as you could probably tell. It's really hard for me to make a video like this, but it's also important people have realistic expectations. And if you want to learn more about this breed, if you're just getting acquainted with it, I'm going to uh, put a really popular video of mine about what makes the Doberman breed so unique as compared to many other breeds. It'll be popping up on our screen pretty soon, but I'll also link to that in the video description down below. Now, if you already own a Doberman and you already know why they're so amazing, I'll also put a cool video in the description down below for you that is all about one thing you can do to help make your Doberman live a very long, healthy and happy life for you years to come. Thank you so much guys for watching today. Um, please make sure you're subscribed down below and the bell icon next to it is ticked as well. If you don't check off that bell icon, then you may miss my next video release and you probably won't get notified about it from YouTube. So make sure the bell icon is checked as well. Thank you so much for watching guys. Be careful of, you know, all those scary Dobermans out there. And of course, I'll see you next time. You're not so scary. Yeah. You're okay. You want a piece of banana? You want some banana? There you go. You're welcome.